Thanks for back here on the program. I'm so excited for the next guest. Before he comes out, oh my goodness, here's Will Ferrell's bio. How many laughs can he cram into one bio? See, that's the problem with Will Ferrell, because for the last 20 years, he's been crushing it. SNL. Evil Knievel's going in the axis of evil. <laughs> Funny or die. I'm not a professional actor, and I can't adjust, I can't make adjustments. Old school. You're my boy, Blue! Anchorman Ron Burgundy and his glorious stash. I'm in a glass case of emotion! And of course, Elf, a film that became an overnight holiday tradition. Santa's coming in town! Santa! But did you know that was the film? that Will thought would end his career. In spite of how familiar Will has become, there's still a lot you might not know about him. His dad, for instance, a hell of a musician, played with the Righteous Brothers and those surf kings at Dick Dale and the Deltones. Will and his brother, raised by a single mom. Will himself, a family man, married to an auctioneer with three young boys. He can count among his fans, Jay-Z, or as we call him, Jay-Z, Kanye, and Toronto Mayor Rob Ford. And while Will himself may have reservations, the Toronto Mayor, as a fan in Ron Burgundy. I hold him in the highest regard. He is the best. Who's unpacking his jazz flute for the new film, Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues. I bet his poop smells like sandalwood. Please welcome to the show, Will Ferrell. Hello, sir. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. How are things? Mm. Thank you. That warm ovation. It's much warmer than being at a curling rink across Canada. <laughs> it is. But the kilt, wearing a kilt is much warmer than you think it would be. Yeah. Yeah. It really depends on how true to the form you are. Are you covered under or not? That's key. I uh, was wearing boxers. <laughs> That's all right. Because I thought it would be chilly, but uh, the Scots knew what they were doing. That material really yeah. traps the, the heat in there. And then I went from being cold to actually sweating right. in that region of my body. Right. Do you always in your head imagine there would be another Ron Burgundy movie, Anchorman movie? Uh, never. Yeah, we, um, we never really envisioned ever doing sequels of our movies just because we had original stories to tell. Um, so. But Anchorman wouldn't go away. They just kind of sat on the shelf and got more and more popular over the years. And, and we finally, finally were like, maybe we should make a sequel. And, and what would be more fun than bringing Ron Burgundy back? And also bringing Ron Burgundy back in a way where you can make kind of a nice social statement and a political statement at the yeah. dawn of 24-hour news, right? Yeah, we, uh, the movie's set in 1980, which uh, we forget that's the, that's the first year for CNN and for... ESPN and all these 24-hour channels started kind of beginning that year, and it's kind of a perfect place to put, to put Ron and the news team trying to figure out what to do, and, and, and we kind of get to, we kind of get to uh, comment on, on how the news is today at the same time. Funny or Die has been a great platform for yeah. social commentary. You've done stuff in the political realm before. H how do you know in your heart when it's the time to do something where it's not just about a laugh, that there's a message behind it or, or, or a point behind it? I think it just kind of strikes you in the moment. Uh, you know, I, I, I think there, you know, I, I obviously just love being funny for funny's sake, but there, there are other moments where you, you see an opportunity to kind of uh, be satirical and subversive and, uh, and still make people laugh, but, but I, I don't, you know, I don't know if there's an exact formula. You just, a certain event may happen and, and a certain attitude may be out there that you want to kind of circle and, and put a, put a spotlight on, and, and those are the times to do it. Did, in, in your home, did you, when you were growing up, was that ever part of the conversation? Were you, did you watch your folks talk about news or families talk about world events? Not really, because uh, my parents didn't talk to me. Um, <laughs> they refused to until I started making money. <laughs> Where'd you find that? Huh? How about that? Holy Toledo. <laughs> I am going to have this amazing reaction and not share it with the audience at all <laughs> as to why I'm reacting this way. Uh, this, is, this is crazy. This is crazy, right? This is, uh, I don't know what camera I should show this to. We'll find it. This is my father. This yeah. is a country western album my dad did, Lee Farrell, Hard Times. I knew your dad Amazing had... graphics, way ahead of its time. But look at this, a letter, there's a letter in there, uh, dude. Boy, that's oh, totally, look at that letter, man, promoting it. 
I knew your dad had played with the Righteous Brothers, wow, but I didn't how know. How did you track this down? We got a team, man. It's a good one. You've got a good team. You want to see, watch this video. Watch this okay. clip. Okay. Okay. Now that. It's uh, Muscle Beach Party. Yeah, Muscle Beach Party, that's right. And my dad's playing saxophone. With Stevie Wonder. With Stevie Wonder and, uh, and Dick Dale. Yeah. And, uh, One of my first interviews. That, that's amazing. Yeah, my dad, uh, for those of you in the audience, uh, my father is, is a lifelong musician, and he got, he finally got his break. He got discovered in the nightclub he was playing, in, and this guy said, let's, I want to I wanna have you record a country western album, and he... Flume to Nash, and it turns out it was a brand new label, but then it turns out that the label was all like a, a tax shelter or something, and they got busted, and the record never got distributed. So there it is. There's only anyway, a few copies around. It really was hard times. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave you good advice when he got into he this gave business, amazing, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, um, I sat down when I decided that I was going to, you know, go for it and, and try to jump into comedy. I sat down with my father and said, "Do you have any advice?" and and he said, uh, you know, if it was strictly about talent, I wouldn't worry about you, but just remember that there's a lot of luck involved and, uh, and that give it a shot, and if you don't get to the point where you want to, to be at, if you aren't satisfied, it's okay to, it's actually okay to walk away. And, and for some reason, that took the pressure off of ever trying to succeed, and I, I thought, well, this is such a crapshoot. I might as well have fun. And... <laughs> And here we are now. Yeah. Stick yeah. around with more with Will yeah. right after this. <laughs> Will and Rob Ford. Oh, yeah, we've got that video coming up. <laughs>
she was a she was a job she had a job called a, she was a plant lady where she'd go to offices and take care of plants and just the most bizarre stuff <laughs> but probably with the dignity that's, that's with dignity yeah. exactly it's 10 years this christmas of elf oh, the 10th yeah. year anniversary of elf that's cr it's crazy i mean i remember running around in new york in a in that outfit <laughs> literally thinking this is the end this is the end of this is the end of my career really yeah and uh, in pointy shoes and in tights. What does that feel and, like when you're having that conversation with yourself? Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I just knew it was a big roll of the dice. I, I really, I loved this concept of a, of a human raised at the North Pole who thinks he's an elf yeah. and finds out he isn't. But, you know, I had just come off of old school, this R-rated, you know, crazy man's comedy, and now I'm doing this family Christmas movie. <laughs> and I, I, I knew it was either going to really work or really fail. What do you make of the Rob Ford scenario? So you have this funny moment with him and then all of a sudden everything blows up. Right. <laughs> what do you think when you watch the tapes back going, oh God? Well, you know, Ron's got a mind of his own. So, uh, Ron Burgundy yeah. and his support of Rob. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I just think it's, it's really fascinating that this, this cultured city, Toronto, has Chris Farley as its mayor. <laughs> We hope, we hope, without the tragic ending. When you're doing, when you're, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, when you're yeah, doing yeah. bits, and you know that yeah. I watch the late night comedy guys do this with all in the states. When you're dealing with a guy and you're not sure what his real state is, how do you approach that kind of material? Um, you know, you usually just, unfortunately, you usually just dive in, and you probably don't think about those ramifications. Because uh, I, I, I mean, I think the the one thing you have to be completely in comedy is fearless, yeah. and uh, and once you kind of make a decision to to make whatever choice you're going to make, you can't look back. Really good to see you, man. Thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, you time. too. Oh, Thanks, everybody. Anchorman 2, the legend continues out December the 18th. We'll be right back.